In early Islamic history, we hear about this idea of threatening to burn the house down uh, two times, in two places. For the average Shia, the, the main instance or main incident where they hear about this is when the second caliph, Umar bin, uh, Umar bin al-Khattab, came to the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, after Saqifa uh, trying to ask and force allegiance from Imam Ali while the Imam is in the house. You hear this uh, statement which is recorded and the Ahlul Sunnah also accept this statement. And that is that he says that if you do not leave the house, I will burn the house upon the people, upon the people that are inside the house. I will burn the house down upon the people with all of its inhabitants that are inside. But what we often don't hear about so much is that, in fact, you hear and you, you, there are similar reports recorded from the Holy Prophet وآله, where he makes pretty much the exact same threat. Not once, but rather multiple times. And that is what we're going to analyze in this session, in this discussion. And then we're going to see at the end whether Omar was just kind of following, you know, the same thing the Prophet was doing. Or was his threat something very different? Or was this just like an Arabic proverb, like something that the Arabs would just say out of anger and frustration? What was it exactly? So we're gonna. So what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna analyze the prophetic hadith, which are far more in number than even the traditions we have about Omar threatening the house of Fatima or the house of Imam Ali. We have more a hadith about the Prophet, and we're gonna see how the ulama treated them because the ulama never rejected them. They never said they were fa these were fabricated. They accepted these narrations and reports, and they tried to deal with them. The Ahlul Sunnah jurists also had to deal with them, and the Shia jurists also had to deal with them. So inshallah, in this discussion, we are going to look at some of these narrations first, and then try and see what do we do with them. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ okay. This is from Sheikh Saduq's مَنْ لَا يَحْرُ الْفَقِيهِ Meaning Sheikh Saduq accepted this narration. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ قَوْمٍ He said to a group of people, لَتَحْضُرُنَّ الْمَسْجِدْ أَوْ he said, he commanded to a group of people that they must enter the masjid. They must make their presence known in the masjid or I will burn their homes on them. Then Marhum Narahi says that this is when you abandon a wajib when a masoom is leading the salat. Now, Muhakkik Hamadani, another one of our fuqaha, he said something different. He says, hey, it was a threat. It was a threat. But if you look at the narration, it says, one of the narrations says, اشترط رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله على جيران المسجد شهود الصلاة That this was a threat to those people because the Prophet had given some people homes besides the masjid, which is a privileged place. Okay, the property values are high. But the Prophet said, I will give you these locations with the condition that you must attend the... <laughs> this is just how the Arabs spoke. And this is not the only report. Okay, this is not the only report where a very harsh type of tahdeed, tahdeed means threat, appears in the in the language of the Prophet or the Imams or in the language of uh, you know the Quran even or in the language of the Arabs. Not regularly. Or were there probably still people who were lazy? There were probably people that were still lazy. Humans are like that. Did the Prophet ever burn their homes down? Did the Prophet ever carry out this action? Do we have any record in history where he actually carried out this plan? We have, you know, turn it into a, a political thing and then granting the ruler also permission based on these generations to do something like that. Or Ayatollah Muntazri taking it to like financial, uh, you know, fines and, you know, how you can find people. What do we do with the threat that Omar gave to the house of Imam Ali. This is 